hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel today i would like to um, show you how to create eds workspace archive what does this mean this means you've made a project in eds and probably you want to email um, your workspace to somebody you cannot actually attach uh, the workspace so you just need to archive your work and send it out to your friend, your teacher, whoever it is, as, a, as an email attachment. So how do you go about that? Uh, well, another, another example is if you have to submit your ADS file uh, as part of your coursework submission, you need to make an archive of your workspace for you to be able to attach it to Moodle or um, Blackboard or whatever submission platform that you have at your institution. So for us to get started, um, I will also show you how to um, on archive an ADS workspace. Let's say a friend of yours decides to send you um, what they have done in ADS uh, through email. So they need to send you an archived file. So for you to view the file, you need to be able to on archive the file in ADS and then you can see what they have sent to you. So let's get started. Now, the first thing I'll do is to uh, launch ADS. Um, I, you should have ADS installed. If not, that will be the first step. So I'll launch ADS um, from where I will um, now archive a file. And of course, do the reverse process, which is um, on archive a file that I have received from somebody. I will show you all of that in a few minutes. Um, so this is ADS. So the first thing I do is open the workspace that I've already created. So I'm going to use um, the one I call test band pass filter. So this is a design I have made. You can see in this design that I have uh, a two-pole uh, band pass filter design with all other um, designs that are shown in this workspace. Um, if I need to send this to a friend or to a colleague or to my teacher, it's, it's not easy to just copy the folder and send, except you want to do it by uh, get a flash drive and copy the folder. It will be too large, very huge size. Easiest thing to do is archive it. So what I'm going to do is, while you're on this uh, workspace window, click on File. You see where it says Archive workspace click on archive workspace and you get this window where you'll be uh, you'll be told the size so you see ordinarily this uh, folder is 9 MB in size however when I generate the archive file is going to be less than 1 MB it's going to be 679 kilobytes which is quite small okay this is like uh, less than one percent of the actual size so this is very very good a good way to send your file across now i'm just going to click on next so now you see now i have the file name so test pump pass filter work seven zaps so this seven z ads is basically the extension name um, the archive file will retain now you can decide to change your location where you want to save it um, or you can just leave it, at, I'm going to leave it to save uh, in my documents. I'm just going to leave it at that point. If you want it save on your desktop, simple, just click on desktop, wherever you want it to be saved. So just click on browse. You can select the destination where you want it to be saved. So if you, if you say, so I'm going to select desktop, for example. So you see now I have it on my desktop. Okay. So I'm just, everything is fine. Uh, I'm not going to select any other thing. I'm just going to say finish. So it says the archive file was successfully created. That's okay. So now if I go to my desktop, you will see that I have my archive file. So this is my file that I've been created. So now I'm going to go back to ADS and just completely log off, shut down my ADS. I'm going to close this off because I've now created the file. I'm just going to uh, log off ADS completely. Now, I have this file. Let's say, let's reverse the process. Let's say you've received this file from a friend and you want to unarchive the file. 
do the same thing go back to ads log on to ads and do the reverse process that is for you to extract the content of that um, uh, archive file and see the project in it so the same process don't forget we have the uh, the file on our desktop so you go to file and you see where it says archive so on archive the file you click on that so that gives you a window where you can select your file so i have it on my desktop so i select desktop i remember that the file is called bpf work dot seven z a d s now so this is the file i need to on archive i need to select the file and i say open so i click on open now i will have that file open so if i say open now it's asking me a location i'm going to leave it where it is just say finish next um okay next Okay, now there's, there's, a, there's a problem. I'm just going to go back. Let's just let's um, put it on a desktop. Uh, select folder. Leave it at our desktop. Next. Now it's fine. It's okay now. Next. I'll just say uh, next. Just next, next, and then finish. Now you see it says it said the file was successfully unarchived. I say okay. Now you see I have back that file. So now I have uh, that file. So if I click on this, you see it's exactly the same file that you had previously. So this is basically the easy way to uh, to archive, and of course, on archive your file if you need to send it to someone. So if you're submitting your assignments or your project, your coursework online to your university portal or profile, you may need to archive your folder into a file of small size for you to be able to do this uh, uh, submission so i hope you've learned something um thank you for listening and then i will advise you to leave a comment or feedback if you there's something you don't understand and i'll be happy to uh, sort, uh get give you a response thank you and see you in my next video